Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. If you like videos on vampire and werewolf movies, subscribe and maybe check out my other videos. Also, if you have any suggestions of a movie or TV show I should cover, please leave them in the comments. I really appreciate all the suggestions you guys leave. Today's video is a little different. I'm going to be taking a look at Netflix series Love, Death and Robots. The show is a collection of shorts and each one is a standalone story. The two episodes I'm going to be looking at are episode 10, Shapeshifters, and episode 5, Sucker of Souls. One episode is focused on werewolves and the other on vampires. I don't usually watch animated shows because personally I don't enjoy them as much as live action, but I have to say I found myself forgetting I was watching an animated show because the stories are so good. The first episode I wanted to talk about is season 1, episode 10, Shapeshifters. This episode takes place in Afghanistan following two marines with some supernatural abilities. While walking through a village, the marine at the front named Decker is walking alone and barefoot. He sniffs into the air and becomes alerted by something, but is then shot. He drops to the ground, but then takes a beast-like stance and his eyes change to an orangish color and the whites of his eyes turn black. His vision then becomes much better, being able to see a great distance. He is then able to see a bullet coming at him and jump out of the way. He can see the enemies at an extreme distance and points out the bad guys to his team. After returning to base, they are in the mess hall getting food. The marine we seen get shot sits down at the table but the sergeant says, you can't sit here. To which he replies, I don't see any reserved signs. And the sergeant replies, no, you can't sit here. He then says corpse went downhill when they started letting you animals wear the uniform. Decker's friend Sobieski speaks up and says, look my buddy took a bullet for you guys today so back off. But the sergeant replies, yeah see. I don't trust anything that bleeds that much and then walks away. Unnatural is what you are. But Decker replies, unnatural. I can stalk my prey by scent alone. I can run for miles while you need to ride in a stinking Humvee all day. I can see clearly on a moonless night while you cling to your flashlight as soon as the sun goes down. You ask me, there's not much natural in that. The sergeant then calls them dog soldiers in a derogatory way, almost causing a fight. Later, Decker's friend Sobieski is relocated to a close by firebase, splitting up the two friends. Decker wakes up in the middle of the night, his eyes reflecting in the dark. He hears something and goes outside to hear gunfire and sees shooting at the base in the distance, the one that Sobieski was sent to. When Decker looks at the firebase in the distance, although it's night, through his eyes it looks as bright as day. That must suck when you're trying to sleep. There is intruders inside one of their firebases and they don't know exactly what is going on. Decker offers to run ahead because he can get there a lot faster. He says it would take them an hour and he could get there in a few minutes. To which one of the other soldiers replies, Dog soldier just worried about his own kind. But he replies, Those are men up there, doesn't matter what kind. So although it seems like a lot of humans have resentment toward the werewolves, our main character doesn't harbor any of those feelings toward humans. Decker rushes toward the base on foot, but when he arrives, everyone has been brutally killed. Definitely the work of another werewolf. He even finds his fellow werewolf Sobieski dead. So whoever attacked this base must have been quite strong. We fast forward to the next day and the commander informs him that 11 men were killed, torn to shreds. He says the Taliban's not supposed to have werewolves and asks how he got past Sobieski. Decker says he took out Sobieski first and then easily killed the rest. So the US military aren't the only ones using werewolves in their ranks. The commander says, what use are you people if you can't even sniff out your own kind? But Decker tells him that he has his scent now and he can track him. We see Decker walking through a village with some other soldiers and end up eventually picking up the scent and it's an older man. And upon closer inspection, his eyes are reflective just like Decker's. But instead of alerting all the soldiers, he keeps it to himself and when he turns around, the old man and the younger boy with him are gone. Later that night, Decker sneaks out into the desert and finds the old man waiting for him like they both knew what needed to be done. The old man tosses him Sobieski's dog tags. So this man was definitely the one who murdered everyone in the firebase. The old man transforms into his wolf form, skin falling from his body and being torn off to reveal the fur and beast beneath. Definitely reminiscent of the werewolf transformation from the Van Housing movie. Decker starts to transform, but is interrupted when he gets attacked by the small boy the old man was with, who is also a werewolf. He is stuck in this half transformation until he gets a moment to reveal his full form. The fight between the three is absolutely brutal and shows what giant animals could really do to each other. And the finale of the fight is probably one of the coolest I've ever seen. 
If you like werewolves and you haven't seen this, you're definitely missing out. I don't want to go over the whole fight, but one part that I really liked is when Deckard gets wounded and slumps over on the ground and the younger werewolf runs in to try and finish him, but the older werewolf knows it's a trap but it's too late. The seemingly wounded werewolf springs back up and kills the boy with one strike, enraging the old man. I'm not describing exactly what happens in the fight because it's extremely gory and I want you to still be able to enjoy the episode if you decide to watch it. After the fight we see Decker returning in the morning to the base and although he had sustained some gruesome wounds in his fight, including losing a large chunk of his arm, he is mostly healed. And when we see him a short while later, his wounds are completely gone. So from what I could tell, werewolves are accepted as being real and everyone knows about them, but they're discriminated against, being called dog soldiers by other marines. We never see a werewolf change in front of another human, only other werewolves, and they wait to fight until after dark and out in the desert. When the firebase is being attacked, one of the marines says, if I see anything come down that hill on four legs, we're shooting. I'm assuming possibly because the werewolves aren't allowed to take their full form, and are only meant to use their heightened senses and abilities to aid the other soldiers. Because after the attack, we learn that the colonel had no idea that the Taliban had werewolves, so there was no reason to expect there to be enemy werewolves at the firebase. So although werewolves can walk around in society, they might still refrain from taking their full form, or they might not be allowed to in fear of what they could do to someone. It's not clear if these werewolves are weak to silver, but they seem to be similar to a lichen from Underworld, being able to control their transformations at will and are not forcibly turned on full moons. They have super senses like smell and sight, being able to smell the enemy soldiers from a great distance at the beginning of the episode and seeing far distances as well. Advanced healing abilities, and they seem to still retain extra strength and stamina while in their human form. The idea of the military using werewolves as super soldiers is such a cool idea and I'd love to see a movie around an idea like this. So that's the episode about the werewolves and now we can take a look at the vampires. This is season one, episode five, Sucker of Souls. This episode is centered around vampires. Well, mostly one vampire, Dracula. We are following an older man and a group of hired mercenaries to accompany him on his search for something in this tomb. Breaking down a wall, they find an inscription on the ground and the doctor gets Simon, a younger boy, to read the inscription and he translates it as, Entombed here, the devourer of children, the black prince, sucker of souls. We see some other mercenaries and they are accompanied by some cats. Well, why not bring cats into a tomb? Soon after exploring the area with the inscription on the ground, Simon's light begins to flicker and he hears some sounds deeper in the tomb. His light then goes out and he's surprised by a humanoid-like creature with red eyes and huge fangs. When the creature steps out of the dark, it towers over them, probably over 10 feet tall. Red eyes, long hair, and the body has strange proportions like longer arms and a very thin torso. It also has sharp nails and claws on its hands and feet and has large veins on its face and body. Well, I think they're veins. It easily kills Simon by lunging at him and biting his neck. The creature is also able to change the shape of its hand, making the fingers much longer and sharper and uses it to impale Simon. So these vampires can almost shapeshift and are able to manipulate their bodies. When Simon is killed, the blood splatters on the ceiling in the shape of a cross and I thought that was a really cool touch. After killing Simon, the creature seems to absorb some of his blood and grows in size becoming much taller and more muscular. Also, when it starts attacking Simon, its face changes from a more humanoid face into something more like a creature. So the vampire might be able to fully take a human form if it wanted. The doctor and mercenary, while running away, are forced to confront the beast. And when the mercenary slashes at its skin, it does nothing but bounce off, causing small sparks. Right when things aren't looking good, one of the cats from earlier enters the room and causes the vampire to freeze in fear. The mercenary is confused and the doctor says he hates cats. Legend says that feeding on them makes his flesh burn, and locals would torment him by bringing hundreds of cats to the fortress. So the man picks up the cat and uses it to make the creature flee, so they can make it back to the other mercenaries. He could be scared of cats because they were considered guardians of the underworld and the dead. There was also an Egyptian goddess, Bastet, that was worshipped in the form of a cat and was the protector against disease and evil spirits. They make it back to the other mercenaries 
and the doctor is told to tell them what's really out there. And the doctor says, it is the Impaler. And one of them says, so there's a Dracula out there? To which the doctor replies, not a Dracula, the Dracula. An ancient evil that defeats whole armies and feasts upon them. They grab their guns and cats and try to make an escape. They find a secret tunnel thanks to a map of the tomb that the doctor had. They make their way into a big tunnel and arrive in a large cavern where they light a flare to look around and realize they are surrounded by hundreds of vampires. The Dracula has an entire army of vampires hiding in this tomb. He might have turned many people into vampires before being sealed in the tomb, or he might have turned people that ventured into the tomb, slowly building up an army. The design of the vampires is really cool and reminds me of the vampires from Priest with their very creature-like appearance. The shape-shifting aspect is really different and I would love to know if they are weak to any traditional vampire weaknesses like silver, crosses, etc. I think these vampires are definitely supernatural considering they were scared of cats, giving them a link to religions and legend, and Dracula was able to shapeshift his hand into a giant sharp blade or whatever you want to call that. I really enjoyed these two episodes of Love, Death, and Robots. If I had to pick my favorite between the two, I think I'd have to say the Shapeshifters episode. The fights were amazing and brutal, and I liked the idea of the military using werewolves. It was something different that I haven't seen a hundred times, whereas a Dracula story, I may have seen one or two of those. The Dracula episode was still great, I just really appreciate what they did with the werewolves. I tried not to spoil everything from these episodes, so hopefully you can still go watch them if you want to. The vampire episode is season 1 episode 5, called Sucker of Souls, and the werewolf episode is season 1 episode 10, called Shapeshifters. If you haven't checked out this show, you really should. Every episode is different, so everyone can find something they like. There's some episodes about genetically modified humans having a foot race for fun across an alien planet, space travel gone wrong, a lot to choose from. Well, thanks so much for watching. Thanks to everyone who has been liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, why not do so now? It helps me out, and you'll see my new videos when they get uploaded. If you have any suggestions for a movie or TV show I should cover, please leave it in the comments below. I always read through your comments and I love talking with you guys. Almost every video I've done so far has been a suggestion from one of you guys in the comments, so thanks. And I'll see you back here for the next video.